Thank you so much, Prime Minister Vettel. Now to our plenary sessions. Our first set of plenary sessions is led by Ivo Fullman and Laura van Knippenberg, followed by a discussion led by Stefan Verhulst. Now, the plenary sessions are going to focus on EU data strategy, the use of the EU's data portal, and how to make data-driven intelligent decisions. The aim is to make the EU a role model, a data-driven society where data flows easily and fairly across countries and sectors, whilst respecting privacy and data protection laws. So first of all, to Ivo Follman, he is Acting Director in the Data Directorate of the Directorate General for Communications, Networks, Content and Technology of the European Commission. Prior to joining the European Commission in 1998, Ivo worked at the Dutch Ministry of Economic Affairs and he has a PhD in European Law from Florence. And so to introduce his speech entitled The EU Data Strategy, towards a single European market for data. Over to you, Ivo. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, very good. Now, first of all, I'm, I'm very happy to be here at this event for open data enthusiasts. Uh, why? Because I see myself as, as the father of the open data policy at European level. And in the, the next six, seven minutes, um, I will talk more about the broader data policy than about open data, but open data is very close to my heart. Um, now, one of the priorities of Commissioner Breton is data, and there are very good reasons for that. Data is essential for the competitiveness of, of our industries. Data can also help us live longer and healthier lives. Um, Data can help us reduce energy consumption. Data can help us to move around more easily across cities. Now, from the start as a commissioner, Commissioner Breton has underlined that innovation in the coming decades is going to depend on one important factor. It's the use of data. And that's why we have um, the European strategy for data. This is about creating a single European market for data with a number of characteristics. What are these characteristics? Well, first of all, we want data to flow. Data must be able to flow amongst member states and between sectors. Then we need the availability of a lot of high quality data to, to fuel innovation. And of course, that also includes open data, data paid for with the public purse. Then very important. Europe needs to handle data in full respect of our values, including privacy. And last but not least, there must be very clear rules for the access to and the use of data. This must be fair, practical and clear in terms of data governance. And that's why we have the data strategy. That's, oh. The data strategy, um, and I'm trying to move. Yes, I get to my four pillars. It's deployed um, through four pillars. Well, first of all, we are setting up a cross-sectoral governance framework for data access and use. And therefore we have a number of legislative instruments. Come back to that in a second. Then we are funding data infrastructures, really crucial for Europe's position in the data markets the cloud infrastructures, and we are willing to invest there. Then we need competencies. We need data experts, but not only, we also must ensure that all citizens have a basic level of data literacy. And last but not least, we want to create common European data spaces in strategic industrial areas, like manufacturing, agriculture, but also areas of public interest, like health and transport. Okay. I go to the four legal instruments for a moment. Well, in November 2020, the European Commission proposed the Data Governance Act. And the aim of the Data Governance Act is to ensure trust, trust in data transactions, essential to make data sharing happen. Then in December 2020, the Commission proposed the Digital Market Acts. 
that is about regulating the market power of the gatekeepers, very large companies that use the data and leverage between different markets and actually um, base their, their strong market position on this data use. And then um, two instruments we're working on. Uh, one is the follow-up to a directive we have on open data, on open government data. And it's an implementing act that is going to define high value data sets. And once something has been defined as a high value data set, it's going to be freely available through APIs and in machine readable format. And that is going to be perfect material, for example, for fueling artificial intelligence. Now, the last instrument that we're working on is the data act. The data act is about fairness in the allocation of data value amongst the different actors in the data economy. Who actually gets this new value of the data? Is it someone who buys an object that produces data? Is it the manufacturer? Is it the aftermarket? Well, that is what the Data Act is going to, to look at. And there is a certain urgency, if I get to my next slide. It doesn't want to move. Well, my point here is, yes, there we are. My point there is that we don't have a lot of time. And this is really recognized at the highest level. We are at a pivotal moment for the data economy. Europe really has a chance to reinforce its position in the data economy, but it will need to act now. And fortunately, the heads of state and government agree. Okay, I go to my last slide, which is about the common European data spaces. It's, it's one of the key measures and the key practical implementation issues of the data strategy. Now, we realized that you cannot treat all areas and data exactly in the same way because health data has different characteristics compared to manufacturing data, for example. And that's why we came up with this concept of common European data spaces. Now, what is a common European data space? It's a combination of governance who gets access to what data and data infrastructures, the cloud infrastructures necessary to handle the data. And of course, we should not create new silos uh, with these data spaces. We must ensure also that the data flows between the different sectors. But starting from these data spaces is going to make things much easier. Now, obviously, open government data is, to go, is going to feed into all the data spaces is going to be a key resource for making these data spaces work. So to conclude, there is a plan at European level for the data economy to make it work, to bring Europe at the forefront of this development. And let's all together make sure that this really happens and that the plan works. I wish you a successful conference on one of the key elements to make the plan work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ivo. And we've got a couple of questions that have come in for you. And please keep these questions coming in. So I can see one question is anonymously written. What are the next steps for the high value data sets? OK, so under the Open Data Directive, we are um, making an implementing act right, an implementing regulation that defines these high value data sets. And I, I mentioned what are the consequences uh, for having, uh, of having these things as high value data sets. It, the, the data will be freely available, machine readable format and available through APIs. So what are the next steps? Um, we are shortly going to launch the inter-service consultation in the commission on the high value data sets. Uh, after that, that round of internal discussions, there will be one month of consultation on the draft implementing act. And afterwards, we have to go through the comitology procedure with the member states before the commission can actually adopt this implementing act. So that are the next steps. Those are the next steps. Yes, there's so many questions uh, that could be asked you. We've got a few more coming in now. One is, will the slides be shared? I'm quite sure between the team, there will be a way for the slides to be shared uh, from all speakers, I believe. Uh, will there be another anonymous question? Will there be the exact same data spaces on member state level? That's, that's an interesting one. 
Um, I think that some member states will be more involved in some member states, uh, sorry, some data spaces than in others. So will all member states be involved exactly in the same way in different data spaces? I don't think so. But are we trying to make different member states work together to have European common, Euro common European data spaces that are defined at the European level? Yes, of course. So in that sense, there will be the same data spaces where we ask member states to contribute. I can see that the questions are now coming in uh, thick and fast, and I'm quite sure that you might be deluged with one or two questions in your inbox uh, quite soon. Uh, just to finally ask one more to you, Evo, if you don't mind, and a quick answer, please. Now, which one will I choose? Um, how is the EC thinking about public interest in mandated B2G data sharing? Ooh. That, that's a, an interesting one. Well, uh, mandated B2G data sharing should, of course, be based on, on a strong public interest. Uh, if you have, take a measure um, to make data sharing compulsory, there must be a strong underlying public interest to, to make that happen. Now, obviously, what is interesting about this concept of public interest is that it's not exactly defined in the same way in all the member states. Now, of course, 80% of what is public interest is going to be the same in all the member states, or perhaps 90. Um, but then there is a gray zone of what constitutes public interest or not. And that's one of the reasons why public interest has not been defined as such in European law, actually, uh, over, over the last uh, years. So we have to make sure that B2G data sharing really corresponds to a clear uh, public interest. But then again, let's not try to uh, focus on this concept of public interest too much because there are differences between the member states. Ivo, thank you so much for your time and for everybody watching from all around the world as we saw right at the top of this event, please do direct further questions to Ivo. I'm sure he will answer them as, as much as he can and to the best of his knowledge. Thank you so much for opening the session this afternoon.